is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps professionals find fulfilling careers. One of the best ways to get good at job hunting is to talk to people who do it well. That's why once a month, I interview a Max List reader who found a job they love. Our guest today is Alex Kanapka. He's the manager of vegetation management at Portland General Electric. Alex Kanapka believes in the power of persistence. Positions at the company where he works now open up very rarely. And in a story you can find on the MaxList website, Alex said he used the time before an opportunity opened up to improve his skills and build relationships with managers inside Portland General Electric. Alex, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Mac. You're the manager of vegetation management at PGE. Why do you love your job? Uh, I love my job. There's tremendous variety. Um, I get to see new parts of the state every single day. I get to interact with dozens of people every day, tree crews, internal customers, external customers. Um, There's autonomy, so much variety. Um, the utility is placing a ton of trust in me, and ultimately we get to help keep the lights on for our customers. <laughs> and let's talk about your search, Alex. What, what was the biggest challenge you faced? Yeah, patience, um, Mac, just in, in waiting for the opportunity to present itself. Um, I'd mentioned in the article that um, coming out of school, taking a very low-paying job and having student debt and a growing family, it's all that external stuff that's piling on stress into an already stressful situation when you're looking for a new job. Um, You know, you can act out of desperation, applying for anything that has the title of, you know, anything above where you're at, right? Um, Just trying to get a better paycheck. And I think uh, patience was the hardest thing because of our situation we were in as a family and trying to improve our quality of life and just feeling a real uh, burden to make a quick change. How long was that wait? Several years. Um, from start to end, from initially beginning my job search and saying, you know, like I finally had enough of where I'm at and really need to start searching um, to getting like extremely serious about, you know, setting quotas for myself for applying for jobs, getting better at tailoring my resume and ultimately going through multiple interview rounds to uh, land an entry level position at the utility. And what did you do while you were waiting to find that job at Portland General Electric? I assume you were employed. Yeah, correct. I was in the landscape design and construction management field. So I did uh, my degrees in landscape architecture and I did landscape design and project management for small, several small landscape design build companies in the area. Okay. And you knew you wanted to move out of that into a new field. What was, what was your goal, Alex? Uh, honestly, Mac, I was looking for any upward mobility and in that specific kind of niche market of landscape architecture, there's very limited options. And so to kind of branch out into either the municipal space, a utility, a parks and rec department, state employment um, with, you know, state parks, things like that, uh, ODOT, I was really looking at a lot of different places to try to spread my wings. But that's a very speci- specific list that you just rattled yeah. off. There were five or six either very clear fields or employers that you had in mind. Yeah, a very clear field. Um the skills translate very well in a very small sector of uh, the employment industry. Okay. So it doesn't sound like you were applying everywhere, were you, Alex? Well, everywhere that had those kind of jobs available, right. certainly. But, um, whether I was over, whether I thought I was overqualified or underqualified, I was just shooting the system trying to get my name out there. But had you identified a, a kind of a short list of dream employers that you, where you wanted to be? Not necessarily. Um, I was open to work throughout the state, um, obviously knowing that the the metro area has the biggest pull in terms of economy and job availability. Um, But I started my career in Salem, um, graduating from University of Idaho, so mobility wasn't a question. Um, I wanted to stay in the Pacific Northwest, but at the time in 2011, when I got out of school, um, you know, the economy was fairly depressed and trying to find work was Basically, you're targeting bigger economies to try to get your foot in the door. Okay, so you were willing to relocate. And you also mentioned, Alex, that you went through multiple interviews, you revised your resume. How did your, how did 
those experiences affect your job search strategy? Did they help you become more focused as you went through that? Yeah, correct. Um, it was through learning more about the positions in the interviews themselves and learning about how I can see myself fitting into this world that I could see where my skills would really shine. Um, certain job interviews where I felt like, oh boy, halfway through, I feel like I'm really stretching my skill set to get here. And if I landed the job, great, but I honestly don't know if I'd enjoy it or if I'm even qualified to do that. Um, and so kind of really targeting and honing, like, what am I really good at? And what could I see myself uh, excelling at in, in the specific industry when I didn't know what was available? I knew employers out there, but I didn't know, like, what are the job specifics? I, for example, like, I didn't even know vegetation management existed at PGE. So it was kind of like, first off, what is that? Okay, secondly, like, that's all about me. So how do I get myself into that role now? And tell us more about why PGE was appealing because you, you wanted to work in landscape architecture and in Correct. design. And I will i don't know a lot about that field, but I have to admit that a, a large public utility isn't the first employer that comes to <laughs> mind when I think about landscape architects. Yeah, it's you and me both. Yeah, yeah certainly. But you've, you've had a different experience. Tell us how you discovered that opportunity and how you made those connections. Sure. So, I mean, just cruising the internet and looking like on Indeed or whatever it was popular at the time and seeing this pop up and I was like, oh, wow, at a utility. And, you know, we paid our bill to PGE and uh, I knew they had a, a reputable name and uh, a solid reputation as being a top employer in the region. And as I dug into the job description, um, I don't, you know, I'm sure you know, but a lot of position descriptions are kind of overly vague to begin with. And so I was still kind of like left with all these questions and it was a big mystery still, um, you know, but again, trying to excel my station in life to take care of the family was like, I need, I need to apply and see what this is about and see if I am qualified. Um, and I want to stop there because sometimes people look at positions and they think, I don't have all the qualifications. For sure. I'm not going to apply. Why, why did you, and kudos to you for being so candid about, you know, not having 100% of the qualifications for this position. Why did you go ahead and quali- uh, apply anyway, Alex? Sure. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that hard work can take you a lot of places. And I'm also have experienced through my career at PGE that there are so many people out there that likely didn't feel they were qualified to get to the positions that they have and ultimately are excelling for our customers, for the company. Um, you know, and at the time, it's just a matter of like believing in yourself that a lot of skills are transferable, right? And I talked in the article about um, resumes and such and not speaking to specific skills, but leveraging that into growth mindsets and how what value are you extracting out of your present circumstance that you can leverage in any sector of employment to build integrity, character, um, you know, trust, autonomy, speed, efficiency, ownership, accountability, those kind of larger traits that people look for that you really build out of specific experiences regardless of industry. Um, so I really tried to, you know, mental floss, so to speak, to you stretch beyond my limits and really challenge what I thought my skill sets were and apply uh, broader strengths to ultimately getting the position that I had. Did you get questions about your qualification when you did have an interview and, and how did you handle them? You know, I didn't. Um, as I went through the interview and we discussed my academic experience and my work history and just responding to scenario-based questions and technical-based questions, um, I found out that I had a lot of the skills that the company was looking for at that time from a technical aspect, but then more importantly, like from a work ethic standpoint, what did I gain out of going through all these seemingly menial experiences in the past and ultimately now sitting for this interview, oh, wow, I just responded to this pretty heavy question with a very relevant example that shows, you know, so many character traits that our employees are, our employers are seeking from their respective employees. And it's like, wow, I actually do belong here now that I know that I can fit and I know what the job is about. Do you remember, Alex, if you did anything special in preparing your application materials to address uh, your lack of some qualifications? Yeah, for sure. I think that was um, part of the big learning curve was one resume does not rule them all. Um, and that's probably why I ended up 
kind of burning out from applying for so many jobs thinking like, man, I'm stuck where I'm at because, you know, I thought I had this great polished resume, a copy and paste mission statement, a generic um, cover letter, you know, kind of change a couple things here and there and just boom, 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 boom. A lot of of quantity, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Definite quantity, questionable quality, right? Um, You mentioned at the start of our conversation (laughs) that you'd actually set a quota for yourself for applications, hadn't you? Yeah, well, because you're getting close to burnout and you're like, man, do I just stop applying? And then if you stop applying, well, you ain't going anywhere. So that was kind of like, all right, I really got to get on this. Um, But that was the thing that I learned was like, as you, these jobs are coming through and maybe you're getting a call back from the hiring manager, maybe you're getting an interview. It's like there's a lot of excitement there. And if you think about how many people are in the job market and how many resumes and interview packets are being seen and distributed, it's it could be quite shocking. And honestly, you know, like I spoke about in the article, it's it's quality tailored to the specific job and leveraging those seemingly menial past experiences into you know huge dividends on these resumes and tailoring it for the job and discussing you know more about the company in between the lines of your responses that ultimately I felt like especially towards the end of my job search and when I narrowed in with PGE and got several interviews um, I felt I had a very compelling resume and a very aesthetic resume as well because I mentioned that craftsmanship is key. Everybody appreciates that. And if you're a hiring manager seeing dozens of these and they all are on white paper with the same font size and it's just a name has changed, it's so easy to get uh, blind to those. And you changed the content, though. You said you yes. wrote a unique resume for PGE. Yeah, it was almost more of a narrative Okay. in each one of these descriptions rather than like a bullet list of things I did or accomplished or, you know, look at me patting myself on the back. It was this broader narrative yeah. of um, more self-developmental based uh, goals and qualities. And did you find uh, during your search when you sent out fewer, more customized resumes that you got a better response? Oh, yes, certainly. Um, Prior to interviewing with PGE, I had a number of interviews with other parks and recs departments um, locally and and through the state and just getting hits off of those custom-tailored resumes where it did take a lot of time on the front end to, to tailor those, and it was time that I didn't necessarily want to spend after working all day, family, dog, dinner, getting the house ready and stuff like that. Like, you don't want to do that. Yeah. And it's easy to take the low road and shoot the system with um, subpar material, but it wasn't until I really dialed that in and committed to the process to make each one um, a standalone piece that I could be proud of that... I actually started getting calls back because people notice that. What's your biggest tip, Alex, for customizing both your resume and your cover letter when someone is seeing a job they really want uh, and it's late at night, it's tempting to bring out the the generic cover letter and resume, but you, you have to customize it. What's your best advice for how to do that? Sure. Everybody values craftsmanship on any level, whether it's beautiful woodworking, art, or a resume or a cover letter. Everybody values craftsmanship. And if there's little tweaks, um, you know, integrate some design theory into it. What's going to be pleasing to the eye? What's going to catch and flow through the resume? How is this going to be read? Is it reading in a logical way as you move through time, as you move through uh, different levels of responsibility? Are you leaving the reader with a sense that this person has grown or are you just listing responsibilities? Um, and an interesting tip in community college, one of my friends on their uh, cover letter of an essay, they actually put this small picture of themselves in the upper right-hand corner and you know, just said their name, the name of the report or whatever. But it, there's this little picture, and I was like, oh, what's up with that, man? And he's like, I always do that because everybody loves a personal touch. And I was like, that is so interesting. And sure enough, like that's what I started doing on my resumes. Just in my name and address block, there's a small picture of myself in some uh, personal protective equipment with the company logo on it, smiling, so people can connect a name and experience a story with a face. Because after all, we're, we're all people. What didn't work in your job search, Alex? Uh, yeah, certainly just trying to apply for quantity over quality. Um, I think I burnt myself out unnecessarily and was probably my own detriment in not getting 
job offers or interviews quick enough because in my desperation, I was just so generic in what I was putting out there thinking that I'll get picked up because I, I know I've been working hard at my current employer and I know I can do a great job and let me just get these out there, get them out, get them out, get them out. That was the the biggest failure in my search was being overly broad with what I wanted and not spending the time up front to research where I could best fit and then really targeting my resume, my interview responses and prep to that specific opportunity. What's your number one job hunting tip? When you're preparing for the interview, plan out ahead of time, craft your responses, prepare questions, articulate your responses, bring in notes. Um, not only do people value craftsmanship, but when you're setting that time aside for the interview, it's, a, it's respecting everybody's time to show that you're prepared, that you're articulate, that you know stuff about the company, that you can speak to your own skill set and you have valid questions for the interview panel. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Alex, thanks for sharing your story. You can learn more about Alex's story and his job search by visiting maxlist.org slash stories. And check out the MaxList website for dozens of other success stories. On the second Friday of every month, we add a new interview with a MaxList reader who's found a dream job. Again, go to maxlist.org slash stories. In the meantime, thank you for listening to today's bonus episode of Find Your Dream Job. 